Hi, uh, I thought I would give a quick demo of the particle filter as applied to robot localization. And because this is an application to robots, uh, this is also an instance of Monte Carlo localization or MCL, which is a paper. If you click on the link, you'll get to a Carnegie Mellon web page with our publication from back in 99, which is now over 20 years ago. Uh, but I hope to convince you that the particle filter or Monte Carlo lo localization is a very simple method to keep track of fairly sophisticated probability densities of a robot as it moves around in space. So uh, in this notebook, uh, we first have a number of uh, imports. So we import NumPy uh, and then we import uh, Plotly Express. Um, let me just quickly remove all outputs uh, and in fact restart the kernel. Um, and so you can see that this is all done uh, in real time. So first we'll import uh, and we represent in uh, a part of the filter our knowledge about the robot location as a set of samples. And so in particular, we can have a pretty vague idea of where the robot is. In this case, I'll, I'll say, I know it's somewhere near the origin, but with a pretty wide <coughs> standard deviation. So let's draw 300 samples here uh, with a mean, which is the origin, and the standard deviation is uh, square root of five. I use variance of five. Uh, and let's draw these samples and, and show them using uh, plot the express. So here you can see uh, it's pretty uncertain. Um, and we can make this even more uncertain, right? So if you, if you like, you know, we can make a standard deviation of uh, three meters, that would be a variance of nine. Uh, and so you'd you sort of see a white cloud here, right? And you can, you can change, you know, the, this n equals 300 to 3000, and it wouldn't make much of a difference for cola. And now we are going to use uh, important sampling to implement Bayes' law. Uh, and that's uh, really one of the coolest features of a particle filter. Um, let's, let's assume that we have a sensor uh, and the sensor is pretty basic. It, uh, it only tells us about the X direction. So it, in particular, this is a super simple sensor. If a robot is as a location uh, X, Y, uh, this the measurement that we'll get here represented by the symbol M will just be the exposition corrupted with some Gaussian noise, okay? And the likelihood that we associate with a measurement like that, so this is the likelihood of the row position given the measurement M is simply proportional to uh, the Gaussian density on M, but now interpreted as a function of X and Y. In this case, it doesn't depend on Y, it simply depends on X. And so this is the, the, the expression of a Gaussian for M, but we don't bother with the normalization constant and we interpret this as a function on X and Y, okay? Now to implement Bayes' law with important sampling, we, important sampling needs two components. It needs a target density, which in this case will be our posterior, and a um, proposal density, which in this case will be our prior and then it will associate with each sample from the proposal a weight, which is called an importance weight, which is simply the ratio between the target and the proposal, here the posterior and the prior. And because the posterior is simply the likelihood times the prior, the prior cancels, and the importance weight simply turns out to be the likelihood, which is, which is magic, it's really cool, okay? Let's implement this using a measurement uh, m equals three uh, and a standard deviation of one, right? So we, we say m equals three, sigma is one, the variance for this measurement is sigma squared. And then the likelihood function of the robot given that measurement is simply here, the, the exponential, right? So let's implement that. Uh, and uh, NumPy has this cool function, says apply along axis, so we can take our samples, 
which are currently unweighted and generate weights for each sample by invoking this function. And then another amazing uh, tidbit is that Plotly Express, you can give simply this, the size of each um, point that will be scattered using a Plotly Express scatter. It will just give the weights and it will do the right thing um, and give us a weighted approximation here of the posterior. And so comparing the unweighted uh, prior, which is pretty uninformative and we just know that we're sort of somewhere around the origin, with the weighted sample approximation of the posterior, we can see that most samples that are not consistent with the measurement are given a zero weight and only samples in this, in this uh, general vicinity of uh, m equals 2 get a high weight and so this visually shows using Plotly Express the weighted sample approximation to the posterior. It's still pretty uncertain though, right? So we, we still don't quite know where the robot is so, so we're not going to uh, use the second element of the particle filter, which is the motion model. Um, and so we're going to take any, every one of these samples and put them through the motion model. In this case, I use a motion model that is going to work very well together with our measurement model. Uh, let's assume that the, the robot is, is uh, moving around the origin in a clockwise, counterclockwise fashion. And that that is very easy to express, so we can say that the velocity, uh, the velocity vector is simply minus y over x, uh, with the appropriate normalization, multiplied with the uh, magnitude of the velocity. And uh, we can just take a couple of Euler steps, uh, which is an integration method uh, to simulate uh, a, a differential equation forward. Um, and I will just, we'll just use an Euler um, simulation forward. You can be more sophisticated about this, but uh, if you take small steps, Euler works just fine. And let's, let's uh, take uh, these, because we're pushing all the weighted samples through this uh, prediction. Uh, you see uh, that we'll get this spiral phenomenon here, right? Because, because what's happening here is we have a bunch of samples that are laid out in, in a uh, uh, sort of a line configuration, but samples that are further from the origin will move, uh, you know, will only move uh, part of the, uh, uh, the arc length, but samples that are close will actually rotate much, a much further along the circle, all with the same velocity, but because they are closer to the origin, they will just trace out more of this this uh, this circle, so we get this spiral um, uh, idea here, right? Uh, and uh, and 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 um, <coughs> that sort of shows off that with the particle filter, you can have pretty sophisticated um, motion models. I mean, this 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 is quite hard to do analytically, but with a sample-based representation, we just take each sample, push it through the motion model. And the entire cloud will get this spiral uh, um, form, but we didn't have to do any sort of complicated math to get that spiral, because the samples individually applying the motion model gets us that. Okay, doc. So, so then uh, the next thing we need to do is to incorporate a new measurement. Uh, so a part of the filter is a recursive filter. So we have to get back to the beginning. We have to get back to, in the beginning we had a, a, an unweighted sample from a prior. Now we have a weighted set of samples that were all pushed through the, uh, the motion model. So we'll use this handy dandy function called NP random choice uh, to resample uh, so random choice just gets a um, will we'll grab from our set of sample indices. We can just give the the, the normalized weights as a uh, the p argument, which will sample from the indices with the appropriate weight. We'll get some indices, and then we'll take the predictions and, and generate the samples, the unweighted samples again. So let's do that, and let's plot them. Uh, and what we can see here is that we are sampling from the spiral, 
right? But according to the weight. So if you compare that with the weighted samples, uh, here they all have a weight, uh, but here, you know, maybe some of the samples uh, will actually have been sampled multiple times, and then other ones that had a close to zero weight will not be represented at all. And then we recurse. So now we maybe have a, a new measurement, say m equals five, right? So uh, so we generate a new likelihood function. You can you can of course use this uh, in in a program. You can use uh, m as an argument. Here we'll just create a new function, uh, create new weights, and then apply. Uh, that's that's all really. We we are just showing off what what the uh, New weighted samples are, and you can see that out of all the samples in this uh, in this uh, in this spiral, it only picks out samples that are close to five, which which here uh, they are represented. Um, and so now we are pretty much localized. Uh, it, there is still some uncertainty. You could sort of see the two different modes here. Uh, but if you compare this with uh, what we knew in the beginning, let's go all the way to the beginning, uh, right? So here is our, our prior, you know, really, but only everything that remained was, was close to five. So, so, so if you compare this representation of our knowledge at the beginning with the representation after one, uh, actually two measurement updates and one motion update, we are pretty pretty certain now as to where the robot is, and of course uh, the particle filter is recursive, so now we can again apply the motion model, and uh, again uh, you know apply a measurement update, uh, and keep track of where the robot is over time. I won't do that here, but the code is there available, and all the elements are there. If you want to make this into a recursive filter. Uh, there is maybe five or six lines of code that really mattered. Everything was, uh, everything else was uh, uh, visualization. Uh, so here are all the elements to create a part of the filter uh, of your own with with a few lines of uh, NumPy code. So uh, I will give a link to the collab with this video. Uh, so enjoy playing with a particle filter.